Good morning. Is Pete there, please? Who is this, Tim? T- yes, it's Tim King. How you doing, Pete? Good, Tim King. How are you? How you doing? How's everything? You know, it's going well. It's going really well. Really wanted to thank you for taking the time uh, this morning to uh, join us and talk about this big development in, really, American history, Pete. Yeah, I know. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, it is. And, you know, um, for our listeners, Pete Bennett, he's been dubbed the world's uh, top rock promoter by Billboard magazine. There's nobody out there that knows more about people like Michael Jackson than Pete Bennett. And, And Michael Jackson's only... One of many people that Pete you managed over your career. You want to just quickly for our listeners review uh, some of the uh, large acts that they were all raised around that were your acts growing up, Pete. Well, I, well, I've been with uh, the Beatles for many, many years. I uh, was the head of Apple Records. I uh, promoted uh, the Beatles. Also, one day split uh, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr. And promoted them individually. And actually, I was the promotion manager. And actually, you could say I was the manager. <laughs> uh, put it that way, because I handled their careers. And then I promoted a group called the Rolling Stones, and I made them big in, in America, in North America, uh, since, since 1963 until uh, 1980. So uh, I worked with Elvis Presley, worked with Frank Sinatra. I broke a group called the Aerosmith, uh, the British Invasion, Dave Clark Five, the Animals, uh, Chad and Jeremy, Peter and Gordon, uh, and the Hermits Hermits. Uh, worked with Night King Cole when I was 19. That was 1963. 65, wow. he died. Uh, Sam Cooke and the, uh, he got killed, he got shot. Worked with Sam and until 65 he died in his career. I worked with Motown Axe, the Supremes, the Marvin Gaye, and uh, Jesus, Stevie Wonder, broke Stevie Wonder's first record. Fingertips made, made him a star on that record. <laughs> Pete, what what a list of people. And and it's it's ironic that, uh, you know, the Beatles, of course, being, and Elvis Presley, they're, they're of course, the two uh, biggest musical acts in history and then Michael Jackson I guess would be right there with them and of course there was a relationship between Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson when we're talking about Michael Jackson uh, this isn't somebody that you met late on you knew Michael when he was just basically a, a boy is that not when your uh, time with yeah, him started? I knew, well I knew Michael and the whole family and the brothers when they were the Jackson 5 and they were on Motown Motown was a company that I, I, I'm the one who broke Motown with it is they, uh, Barry Gordy, <clears throat> at that time, Barry couldn't, you in the four promotion, and the deal we worked out, and I broke the company into big, and the, which did it, the Marvelettes, the, the Very Wells, uh, went into the Supremes, made that company big, big money. But I'm, uh, the Jackson Fire, I made a big deal with them when they were with Motown. I put them uh, with General Foods with the cereal box, and on the cereal box, we put like a, a record like a 45 record that you could play. If you buy the cereal box, you could clip the record out, you could play a song out of it. And I made that deal for the Jackson 5, that was the Jackson 5. Now later on, I mean, Mike was only this, probably 12 years old, 13. And later on when he was about 16 and a half, I signed him for negotiating the deal with Columbia, which owns Epic Records. And uh, at that time, uh, the, the Jackson, they couldn't use the Jackson 5. We had, they, they had to use the Jackson family because also Motown was still suing them because Motown owned that name, Jackson 5. But they left Motown and uh, actually Columbia didn't want to uh, sign them. Uh, they came down to see them at Westbury Music Hall in Long Island. And I convinced them to sign them. Uh, uh, and I said, look, I said, uh, you know, this group, visual, nobody could beat them. You know, with their dance routines, and mm-hmm. especially Michael. If Michael spins off later on, I said to just to Michael Jackson, I said, it'll, it'll fly to the moon, they'll go right to the moon. So, and I says, well, visually, where could they go visually? I says, well, I said, MTV's gonna be launching. Not, you know, soon enough, I said, if they let MTV uh, put them on, I said, that's the end of that. It, 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 it's gone. I said, because see, at the time, the reason why CBS didn't want to sign Columbia, which is Sony today, 
is because the popularity went down. They won some records, and uh, you know, uh, they, they, as far as concerts, they uh, they only drew uh, low. They didn't draw what they used to draw uh, thousands. To. I mean, at the Westbury was twenty eight hundred. They drew only fifteen hundred. Hmm. Was from there, I put him into Las Vegas at the MGM. And what happened was that Osmond stole all their fans. Oh. The Osmond brothers at that time. But so what happened, they did sign him. Joe, Joe, uh, Joe Jackson signed the contract down in the fact with CBS. Right. Which uh, they, they were threatened, the Jacksons were threatened by the, the label not to go to uh, uh, Epic Records in Columbia. And even Diana Ross was calling him up, uh, calling Michael every and tell him, don't sign, don't sign. But he could, he was on the H&E Don't go to Columbia, that's not the label for you. You're gonna get in a lot of trouble, things like that. Then Jermaine Jackson, he he was telling Michael, don't go, because Jermaine, at that time, was married to Hazel Gordy, which was Barry Gordy's daughter. Mm. So he wasn't with the label then. He wasn't with the CBS, he remained with Motown. Got it, got it. Wow, Pete. Michael was a great. I gave a party to Michael. Actually, I gave him a Sweet 16 party at Westbury Music Hall. If you go on my website, you see the cake in me and Michael. Uh, Michael was a. a I always liked Michael. I, I liked the whole family. I mean, I was close to the family. I was close to the brothers uh, Jackie, Randy, Tito, um, 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 Marvin, uh, Marlon, and. Uh, also, the oldest sister, nobody talks about Julie, the oldest sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Latoya and, the, and Janet, I remember Janet when she was a little heavy and uh, 10, 12 years old, you know. Wow. So, Mike, well, just describe Michael back then. Describe what he was like as a person to, you know, to talk to and, and what his aspirations were that you knew. Well, he he always admired, he always admired, even when he was a kid, he admired as Taylor. Uh, you know, he might, he might like uh, Elvis Presley. He might when he was a kid, and of course, he might James Brown and Joe Tex. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. I don't know. In fact, Joe Tex was an artist I worked with. A lot of people don't know who he is either. He's from the Texas. Great, great uh, uh, dancer and uh, singer. Uh, he had a lot, of, a couple of big hits, and he might those people. He was copy from those people actually to do his dancing whatever you know what I mean but Mike was was very shy very quiet all the time always with his mother always reading the Bible every day with his mother he was a generous witness you know mm -hmm. and uh, he was uh, it was different than his brothers. I mean, his brothers were more swinger, but Michael was only in the corner by himself. But he didn't like his father. He never liked his father for, uh, since he was a kid. He never really liked his father. But you heard all these stories. Before. Always heard a lot of them, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean. that. But then his father used to cheat on the mother. He didn't like that and all that, you know. But uh, Michael, uh, when I used to see Michael uh, go to the house, they lived in Encino. Mm -hmm. right? Of Washington Street, I think, and then there was a, they had a nice big pool, and I used to sit down and talk to Michael. They had a recording studio at the house, and Michael uh, and I used to relate together. And he used to, he used to always have a bird on top of his shoulder. He had like one of these arrow birds, you know, and he liked birds. Wow. And, but he was very gentle, very polite, and uh, one time they worked at the uh, up in Long Island, besides Westbury. Uh, we went out there, and uh, in fact, he told me how to dance. He saw me dance. He says, "You got to do it this way." But he won't go on the floor and dance. He was he was hidden in the corner someplace. Nobody sees him, you know. <laughs> and, and also, also when he used to call you, he used to use all different names, you know, and say, "Oh, Brad, uh, Brad is calling you." Oh, Lord, this is Lord. Lord called for Pete Bennett. I was staying at the Central Plaza Hotel, and phone calls, all different weird names were coming in, you know. And people didn't know that it's Michael Jackson, you know.